Okay, so in this problem we're told, you are explaining to friends why astronauts feel weightless orbiting in the space shuttle, and they respond that they thought gravity was just a lot weaker up there. Convince them, and yourself, that it isn't so by calculating how much weaker gravity is 300 kilometers above Earth's surface. So essentially, imagine this is the Earth, and this point right here is 300 kilometers above Earth's surface, and what we're trying to calculate is uh, the acceleration due to gravity at this point. So how do we calculate this? So in order to do this, you should understand another thing real quick. So imagine we have two masses, one mass here, one mass here, with a radius in between them. And so we know by Newton's law of gravitation that any object is going to experience a force due to gravity by another object. And so we can calculate that value by doing this. So the force due to gravity, right, so the force of gravity experienced by one object due to another is equal to g, the gravitational constant, multiplied by m1 times m2 divided by r squared. So m1 and m2 are the masses of the two objects, and then the r is just the radius between them, or the distance uh, between them. And so how does this relate back to our problem here? So uh, notice we're going to be finding uh, acceleration, where acceleration, or sorry, force is just a times m. And so what we can do is imagine this formula right here, but for the objects here. So imagine we have our astronaut here with mass m1, and then we'll call our Earth mass m2. So in this formula, we're trying to find uh, the acceleration experienced uh, by this, right? And so the force due to gravity experienced by this astronaut, we know F equals ma, so this is just m1, right? So the mass of the astronaut times a, which is their acceleration, is equal to g, m1, right, their mass, times m2, which is the mass of the Earth, divided by r squared. And so you can see how this formula translates exactly to the Earth. But instead of uh, the mass of these two objects, we just have the mass of our person and then the mass of the uh, Earth. And so you'll see m1's cancel, and you have essentially the acceleration of our astronaut here is g times the mass m2, which we set as the Earth, right? This was m2, so we can just write this as me, the mass of the Earth, divided by the radius, right? And so radius was the distance between them, as I said before. So this is really uh, r squared. So that's essentially how you derive this formula, and you can use this formula for any planet. So if you want to find the acceleration experienced by an astronaut on any planet, right, you have g times the mass of that planet divided by the radius, which is their distance from the center of the planet, essentially. So this is the main formula we're going to use. I just wanted to show you how we actually derived it from the normal uh, gravitational right formula. Uh, but yeah, so really it's just a matter of plugging things in now. So you need to know g and you need to know me. So let me write them here. So you need to know what g is. And so g is just a constant, which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Uh, the mass of the Earth is another thing you should memorize, which is 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kg. Right, so we have the gravitational constant, we have the mass of the Earth, and then we have the radius here, which we need to solve for. Um, and so radius is the distance between the two, but you basically always take it from the center. So we have the radius of the Earth here, right, which is this distance, and then we have the distance from uh, the surface to the person, right, our astronaut. So the radius or the distance between them, which is this whole thing, is Re plus H to get R. So to solve for our R, it's the radius of the Earth plus uh, the height, right, which is 300 kilometers. So uh, you need to know the radius of the Earth, which is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. Uh, and then we add the height, which is 300 kilometers. Uh, and then we can convert that into meters. So 300, and then it would be times 10 to the 3 meters. Because one kilometer is 1,000 meters, uh, which is just 10 to the 3 meters. So all you got to do is multiply by 10 to the 3. And then, yeah, so this is R right here. And now we have R, we have ME, and we have G. So to find the acceleration due to the Earth uh, of our astronaut, which is some R away, uh, you just 
plug them in now. So let me go ahead and do that now. So G, as I said before, is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Uh, and then the mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24. Divided by R squared, 6.38 times 10 to the 6 plus 300 times 10 to the 3. Uh, and then keep in mind this value is squared since it's uh, the R. Uh, and yeah, so uh, if you go ahead and do this, so 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 5.97 times 10 to the 24. And then you divide by 6.38 times 10 to the 6 plus 300 times 10 to the 3 squared. You will get about 8.924 meters per second squared. So what you should notice is uh, we know the acceleration due to gravity with someone on the surface is uh, just 1g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And so you should be able to see that the value isn't really that much less. So um, we can see that it's 8.9 versus 9.8, which isn't really that big of a difference. And uh, if you wanted, you could calculate what that percent is. 8.924 divided by 9.8. You're going to get about 0.91. And so keep in mind, this is, a, this is 1G. So you could say 0.91 Gs. But essentially, it's going to be really similar to the value. Only 0.9% uh, of it, right? Which is basically really close to the value. So it's only about 9% weaker than the value of G that they would experience uh, right, just on the surface. So this right here is basically going to be your answer. So the acceleration they would experience is 8.924 meters per second squared. So yeah, this right here is, are these going to be your answers essentially? And uh, hopefully you found this video useful. So just to make a recap of what we did to solve this, because I think it's really useful. Um, you got to memorize this formula right here. So it's really uh, necessary to get an understanding for this formula to look at this one. So just to recap, if you have two masses, right, they're going to experience a force due to gravity. It's going to be the same value. Um, but essentially, you just plug in the two masses, and then the radius is the distance between the two. So all we did was basically use that, but with our planet. So it's important to understand these connections because they can help you derive formulas for other problems. Uh, but yeah, so after we did that, all we basically did was just plug in the values. So it's really important to memorize these values because you're going to be using them basically throughout the entire chapter here. And then noticing that we also take it from the center because we have to take it from the center or else if we didn't, it would really just be their height, which would be this distance, which would be way off because this distance is bigger than this distance. So if we didn't include it, uh, include it, it would just uh, not give us the correct value. So Make sure you basically, or you understand that it's from the center of the object, uh, like we did here. But uh, yeah, so uh, with that in mind, these are your answers, and hopefully uh, you found this useful.